a travel guide for visiting the Japanese mountain town of Uichi Juku in Fukushima Prefecture, Japan. This video is part of our series on Fukushima. If you want to see more videos on Fukushima, you'll find links in the description below. But in this video, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know to visit Uichi Juku, including how to get here, what to do when you're here, and of course, what to eat. But first, let's start with a little historical background. So the history of this town, why is it here? Uichi Juku in the Edo period served as a post town on the road between Niko and the Aizu region, this mountain region of Fukushima. The feudal lords in the Edo period, which was like the 1600s to the 1800s, they were required to spend every other year in Edo, the former name of Tokyo. And that's a long journey and they would have to stop and they would have to rest. And so actually this town is where the feudal lord would rest. And by the way, all of the houses are about the same size, except for this one. This house is bigger than all of the other houses because this is the house that the feudal lord would stay in. The other thing you'll want to know about this house if you're coming here is that's where the public bathrooms are in Uichi Juku behind the back. So the roofs of all these houses are pretty unique in Japan. They used to build houses more like this, but not today. These houses are built of a local Japanese grass in a thatched style. They're really good for keeping the snow off. The snow actually doesn't leak through, but they have a strict control on smoking cigarettes in this town because they don't want anything to catch on fire. And the only time they allow fireworks is during winter festival, because when the houses are covered in snow, then nothing can catch on fire. But these roofs are amazingly thick. It's almost like two feet thick of this grass. I bet that takes a lot of work. One of the first things you're gonna wanna do when you get here is check out the viewpoint for some amazing views of this town. To check out that viewpoint, just head to the end of the road near the hill. There's two ways up. There's a staircase right here closed in the winter. There's this other way up. I will point out it can be quite slippery if you're here doing snow time, so make sure to use the handrail. But it is worth it because the views from up on that hill are really breathtaking. The 48 houses, they've been converted into things for tourists, souvenirs, cafes, bed and breakfast. This one here, it's a really neat souvenir shop and they're not cheap and crappy souvenirs. You might get central Tokyo. There are a lot of handmade things here. Here they have wooden crafts. They have little cups. These guys are really cute. Uh, and also at this shop on display, she's got some pictures of what the snow festival looks like in full swing, where you can see these snow statues that they built. They can be pretty big. But you know what? Seeing the actual thing is so much better than just pictures. Here's a Doraemon, a little smaller than when they've had snow years. And here's a little igloo. Bigger years when they have more snow. I think they're bigger. Do I fit? Let's see. Almost the perfect size. Ooh, my head's cold. One of the great things about exploring Uichijuku, you can't get lost because all of the houses, they're just on a central main street. But a defining characteristic of this main street is there's this stream that runs down the main street. And there's steps from each of the houses underneath the snow. I'm not going to go down there. But the steps were built here so that the residents could wash things like vegetables and things like that in the stream before there were running water and pipes. Actually, running water, but before pipes. And the residents today still use the stream to wash things. Here, you see a local resident washing some chestnuts. In addition to washing, they also use it to make things cold. The water is quite cold. This house has been converted into a restaurant and they specialize in soba noodles. Uh, soba noodles we'll find all throughout the town. We're gonna have one of the famous noodles, Negi soba noodles, in a little bit. Uh, but they've also got some seats in front where you can sit out here and drink some hot tea. And they've got another cool character over here. This is not uh, just a Japanese character, but they've got Olaf from Frozen. Speaking of soba, there's one particular soba dish that this town is famous for, negi soba. Soba like this. What's a negi? I'm gonna tell you in a little bit because we're gonna visit the shop that originated this dish and made it so famous in this town, but you could find it in many of these guest houses. Just look for a big sign with the negi soba. So one of the coolest shops here is Kanoya, and out here in the front of the shop, they've got uh, all of these different kind of fabric art things. They've got some peaches here, a symbol of prosperity, I think. They've got uh, little things here for the Chinese zodiac. If we come over this way, you can get uh, fruit, you can get persimmons, you can get strawberries. Actually, we picked up uh, one of these to bring back home to California. And then if you prefer something cute to bring back a souvenir with the name of the town on it, over here, they've got a whole bunch of different original characters. And these original characters, they have the name of the town on it, Oichijuku. But of course, probably I think one of the most symbolic things to bring back from any place in Japan is an owl. Hello, Mr. Owl. 
So on the side of the shop, they've got Japanese pickles and they've got hot tea. This is really nice of her and delicious on a hot on a hot day. She's so nice. She's offering one to the to the camera operator for OC girl. So while we're drinking the hot tea, we can admire these Japanese pickles that are right here. This shop sells Japanese pickles, and here you can sample all the Japanese pickles, and then you can buy them right here. This is amazing and so welcoming. Definitely stop in this shop if you come to Ichijuku. If you're looking for a tasty dessert here, and maybe you're here in the summer season, then check out the persimmon softo cream. Persimmons are local to the region and are quite delicious here. So to get to Oichijuku, you've got two options. There's a bus that'll bring you here from Yunokami Osun Station, but it only runs kind of in the summertime or big touristy seasons. Your other option is to take a car. And actually, I recommend bringing a car. This is a great region to have a car. And this is the neat road up to Oichijuku. And if you have a car, then you can also kind of stop and admire the nature and the beautiful winter streams here in the winter. And I'm sure this stream is just as pretty in the summertime too. So speaking of the Negi Soba, if you want to try the restaurant that originated Negi Soba, it is this one right here, Misawa Restaurant. This is like one of the buildings closest to the parking lot or the bus stop. Sliding door, if you don't know how to get in, just slide it and I'll see you inside. So sitting down at a very nice table in this restaurant, it's a really neat place coming into one of these old houses. But here's the menu, and something really interesting about the menu, there's a few different types of soba. What everybody comes here for is the negi soba, and I'll talk about this more as we get it. Uh, there's also some that don't have soup or sauce, there's fish, and something that I thought was really interesting is if you just wanna get a negi, the negi, you can just buy that for 110 yen or about one US dollar. And another really neat thing about dining here in the winter, these tables have these blankets that go under them and they're actually heated underneath and there's a little plug you can control the temperature. My legs are nice and toasty. No visit to Uichijuku would be complete without the negi soba. And I told you I would tell you what the negi soba is. This is a negi. This is a leek. This is a specially grown leek. They grow them specially in this region in the curved shape to be used as a chopstick to eat buckwheat noodles. These are served cold and it's got bonito flake, it's got daikon radish. We can stir it up before we eat it and I have no chopsticks on this table. I just have this. I've been practicing my slurping muscles here in Japan because it's compliments to the chef to slurp the noodles. The noodles have a very clean taste and you eat the negi as you eat the noodles, which is really kind of spicy. And as you eat the negi more, the flavor changes the further you go up on it. Now, how do I know that? So I was here two days ago and had this as well. It was that good. We had to come back. So when you come to Ichijuku, make sure you get the dish the region is famous for, the negi soba. In addition to soba noodles, this region also specializes in sake, Japanese rice wine. If you want to try some at this shop, they have a special brew that they make. It's been aged under the snow for 100 days, 800 yen for a pretty big cup inside the restaurant. And if you just want to try that sake and you want to bring back a whole bottle, there's a shop right next to the negi soba shop that sells the sake. The one year sake, 2,500 for the bottles the 10 year sake, 10,000 yen for the bottle. So that one's about a hundred bucks. I think, I think I'll go for this one. And the last thing to do is watch more Yellow Productions videos. I've got a whole bunch more videos on Fukushima, including things to know and things to eat. You can click either of these videos to watch them or find the links in the description below. As usual, I won't say goodbye because I'll see you in the next video.